If you're studying for the AccuPlacer math test, this video is for you. Relearn what you need to know for the quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics section. This video is about properties of exponents. Watch our previous videos for this section linked below. This is part of an AccuPlacer math playlist, so subscribe for more math, reading, and writing AccuPlacer videos. Be sure to check out our printed study guidebook. In this video, we're going to look at a few properties of exponents, and we actually have all of the properties here. And once we look at a few of these, we will actually come and do two examples to finish this lesson off. So properties of exponents, what are we talking about here? Uh, we have a product rule where we have the same base, different base, a quotient rule for the same base and different base, power of a power rule, the zero exponent rule, and the negative exponent rule. I think a good way to show you some of these properties is to actually use a calculator. And let's look at this product rule with the same base. What is a base? We have a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. The base is your a. Now what do all these variables mean? Well let's look at this example over here. If we take 4 to the first times 4 to the fourth, Notice what we're doing here. We had these like bases of four. And what we're doing with the exponents, when we multiply like bases, we actually add our exponents. Let's have a look on the calculator. If we take four to the first, and then we multiply this by four to the fourth. Now, we get 1024. Since we have the same bases of four down here, we can add those exponents together and we get four to the fifth. Same exact answer. Well, check this out. If we take 4 squared and then we multiply this by 4 to the third power, notice if we have the same bases, which we do, we can add our exponents and we should get the same answer because 2 plus 3 is 5 as well. And in general, what this means is, as long as we have the same bases, regardless of what that number is, some arbitrary number, we call it x, x to the first times x to the fourth, we can write a single base of x and add our exponents, and in this case we would get x to the fifth. Let's come and look at another rule. How about this power of a power rule? If we have a to the m and all of that stuff is raised to the n, we can multiply these two exponents together. Check this out right here. We have 2 squared and then we're cubing all that. Well, this means we can actually take the 2 times the 3, these two exponents, and we should have 2 to the 6. This works for any base raised to a power, and then that is raised to a power as well. So a base of x to the 5th, and all of that is raised to the 8th. We take 5 times 8, we get 40, so that should be x to the 40th power. Let's try one on the calculator. Let's take 3 and raise it to the 4th. And then let's take all of that and let's square it. So 3 to the 4th, whatever that is, if we square it, we should get 6,561. Now, if we apply this power of a power rule, if we take 4 times 2, we should be able to take this 3 and raise it to the 8th power. A power to a power, we multiply our exponents, and notice we do get 6,561. Let's actually take this rule right here, power of a power rule, and let's apply it to this example. But before we do that, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to expand this to show you the long way, which will also show you the product rule, which is this first rule we went over right here. So 2x squared and all of this raised to the fourth. Here is the expanded form. 2x squared raised to the fourth means 2x squared times 2x squared times 2x squared times another 2x squared. That's what 2x squared, all of that raised to the fourth. We're multiplying it times itself four times. So let's work this out by working with the twos first. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. Now if we apply our product rule, we can add the exponents of these x's because we have the same bases here. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 2 more is 6, plus 2 more gives us 8. x to the 8th power. 16x to the 8th is our answer. But now let's do this a little bit faster. 
let's take our 2x squared again, and this is raised to the fourth power. We can actually rewrite this as 2 to the first x squared, all of this raised to the fourth. Whenever you don't see an exponent with a number or a variable, it's an understood one as an exponent. Now this 2x squared is still all one term, and we can actually take this four and multiply it by both exponents. That will give us two to the fourth because one times four is four. And then if we take this two times four, we get x to the eighth power. So this prevents us from having to expand it out. And if we take two to the fourth, 2 to the 4th, we just did that up here, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that is 16, and notice we have our x to the 8th. It's the exact same answer as we got earlier. Now let's go back and look at a few more of these properties. I want to look at this negative exponent rule down here. I'm going to come to the calculator, and I'm going to take 3, and I'm going to raise that to the negative 4 power. And if we do this, we get a weird looking number. Ironically, it's 0 0.01234567, and maybe that is an 8, who knows. But anyway, what I want to show you is this. Notice this rule. If we have some base to a negative power, we can take 1 and put it over 1 over that same base to the positive power. So notice we had a negative exponent here. We can actually turn that negative exponent into a positive exponent. So 1 over 3 to the 4th power, we should get the exact same answer. And as you can see, we do. Now, let's look at this another way. Suppose we already had 1 over some number, let's say 2, and it's raised to the negative 3. Check out what this gives us. This gives us 8. Well, notice that 2 to the positive 3 power is also 8. The point I'm making here is this. Since 2 to the negative 3 was at the bottom, we can shoot it up to the top, but when we do that, we make the exponent positive. The generalized rule there is this. 1 over x to the negative 3, we can take this entire piece, shoot it up to the top, and that's totally fine as long as we take x to the positive 3. Let's take that rule now and apply it to our next example in conjunction with maybe some of the other rules we have talked about. So notice we have a fraction and we have x to the negative 2 over y squared and all of this is cubed. i tell you what I'm going to do first. I'm going to expand this all the way out. We have x to the negative 2 over y squared and all of this stuff is getting cubed. So that means we're going to multiply it times itself a total of three times. So I'm going to repeat it. Here's my second time. And since it is getting cubed, we need to multiply it times itself this third time here. Now it is helpful to understand how to multiply fractions, but now we have to apply these properties of exponents. To multiply fractions, we go straight across. So take our numerators and let's multiply them together. Using our product rule for properties of exponents, since all of these bases are the same, we can write that base and we can actually add these exponents, which gives us negative six. Over at the bottom, we had the same bases of y and we can add these exponents as well and that's gonna be positive six. Now technically there's nothing wrong with this answer, but notice it does not match anything. Using our new property with the negative exponents, this x to the negative six was in the numerator well, we can shoot it down to the denominator and make that 6 positive, just like I did here. The y to the 6, we don't need to move it. It had a positive exponent already. And if we don't see anything in our numerator, it's always an understood one. And using that right there, we can see we do have a match with answer A. Now let's speed this up a little bit. Let's apply our power to a power rule. Notice we have x to the negative 2, and that is raised to the third. Well, we can write that as x to the negative 6, because what I'm doing there is I'm taking this power times this power, and negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Hmm, looking familiar, right? Well, we can actually do the same thing to the bottom. y squared to the third, we take the 2 times the 3, and we leave it at the bottom as y to the 6. And now you can see that we had the exact same thing that we got right here in this answer. And again, we proceeded to move this x to the negative 6 to the bottom to match that of answer A.
Now in future lessons, we will explore more of these rules, uh, especially the zero exponent. Anything to the zero power is one. That's something important to remember. And also in future lessons, we will look at different bases and ways that we can deal with them. As a matter of fact, we kind of did, you know, the different base right here in this example, where we had two different bases, an X and a Y, and we dealt with each one individually. You know, we dealt with the X to the negative two with the three, then we had the Y squared that we dealt with this three. And there you have it, a quick overview of the properties of exponents. One example we did not see here in particular was this quotient rule with the same base. And that's essentially instead of us adding exponents like with the product rule, we would actually subtract exponents. I'd encourage you to pause the video here and look over these examples. Also grab a calculator and just start typing things in like I did at the beginning where we were just experimenting with some of these rules and you will see that all of these do work. And that's it for this video. Smart Edition will see you in the next lesson.